Okay, let's get started. This is Professor Pincushion's very first webcast. So we're learning how to do this, just as you're going to be learning with us tonight on creating some fun earrings. Let me show you an example of what we'll be making tonight. This little fun flirty earrings. Fun earrings. Let me show you an example of what we'll be making tonight. And we're going to first go over how to what supplies you're going to be needing in order to make these earrings. So the first thing we're going to need is a hammer. You can use a hole punch in order to help us with the eyelet, but it's not necessary. We have some embroidery flat floss for around the earring, some batting or felt for inside the earring to give it a little bit of shape, a little bit of material, my pattern, which you could get on the website, it's just a circle, definitely some decorations for decorating our earrings, scissors, marker or fabric chalk, sewing gauge, and then this is to prevent fraying, some fabric glue, pins and needles. I have here a single eyelet. You need one eyelet per earring. The size is 532. The eyelet kit comes with this little tool. So I just purchased the kit so I get the tool since I didn't have it. And then it comes with the eyelets on it, so that's nice. Then you have the French hook earring or the French wire hook. And then I have a jump ring, and the size is about 12 millimeter. So once you have all your supplies, we can move in a little bit closer because we're going to start making the earrings with our fabric. So I'm just going to move all this out of the way for now and just get what I need. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my circle out of, I'm going to do two of them out of my main fabric. So I just have one on top of the other because it just makes it a little bit easier to cut them out at the same time. So that way you can make sure that they're the same shape or pretty close to the same shape. So I'm going to do it out of this nice green fabric, which is perfect for fall, which is coming up. I love the color. So I'm just using some straight pins to hold it. It's not very big, so I guess you can just hold it with your hand if you want to, but I'm not very good. A cutting circle, so I always need a little extra help. Okay, once it's on there, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And the nice thing about this is that you can do any size circle you want, so you can make it big, you can make it small. Because it's mostly just made out of fabric, it's extremely lightweight. So one thing I don't like is really heavy earrings. My ears get tired, so I like it when it's nice and light. So I'm just trying to cut it as carefully as I can. All right, that's good. So then I'm going to get my stuff here that prevents the fraying in the fabric. And I'm going to apply it just around to the edges because I don't want my earrings to fray after I make them. I'm just going to carefully go all the way around the edges of the fabric. And it's a good idea to test it on your fabric first because sometimes it does cause a little discoloration and you need to know that ahead of time. And I'm just doing it right around the edge. Also, the nice thing is about this, since you are doing a freight check, you can really make these earrings any shape you want. You don't have to do circles. You can do stars. You can do elephants. Do whatever you want. That's what I really like doing crafts where there are many different options for being creative. So after I finish applying this, and I'm just doing them both at the same time, so it saves me a little bit of time just holding both layers together. I'm just going to let them dry then a little bit after I finish doing this. And if you're using a fabric like felt or suede cloth or something like that that doesn't fray, then you get to skip this step. So that's kind of nice. You can skip the fray check. All right, so I'm just going to set this aside so I let that dry a little bit. And then I'm going to cut out one more circle out of my batting. So I'm going to use my same pattern again. And what the batting is for, or you can also use felt if you want, it just helps to give the earring 
a little bit of body so it's not as floppy and flimsy and everything like that. So it just adds a little bit of extra strength to the shape. So I'm going to cut this out. And you only need to do one layer. You don't need to do two like the fabric. Just one. All right. And then because I want to make sure that my batting is not going to be sticking out from my fabric circle. I'm just going to go around again and just trim it so it's a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's going to see it once it's on the inside, which is good because I never, I never cut circles perfectly just freehand. There we go. So Here's the circle again. We're going to take our batting or your felt and you're going to place it underneath one layer and then place the other layer on top. And also you want to make sure that your right side of the fabric is on the outside. So it's kind of like a fabric sandwich. So right side, the batting, and the right side again. So all I'm going to do is just pin the layers together once I have that. I'm going to grab my sewing gauge. And you don't need a sewing gauge. You can just use a ruler if you want or some straight edge. Sometimes if I don't have one, I just use a folded piece of paper. And I'm just going to draw lines of where I want to stitch my design. Because then we're going to go to our machine. And it kind of gives it like a, not necessarily a quilted look, but definitely a thread design. So I'm just randomly drawing where I would like my stitching to be. And I'm not good at drawing or stitching straight lines either, so I need to draw them. So after I finish doing this, we're now going to go to the machine. So then we can draw our, our stitcher stitches then. All right, so now I'm at the machine. Just one second here as we set up for our machine shot. There we go. And I'm just using a regular stitch, and I kind of like using a contrasting thread because it's another way to decorate. So it's a good contrast. Make sure to do a back stitch, and then I'm just going to follow along with my lines. So I only have to do three. So there's one. And if your circle goes off a little bit from the other circle, you can always trim it later so they're even. So there's one. And then we're going to do the next one. And lines definitely help with making it straight. There we go. And then one more. And that part is done. All right, so then after this is done, we're going to go back to the table so we can continue working. So that's the only part we really need to do on the machine. So let's go to the table. And I'm just going to trim off all my threads, my scissors. And you really don't have to do this with the machine if you don't have one. You can do hand stitches in it if you want. You can create all kinds of designs with stitches. So there's no reason why you can't do this even if you don't have a machine. All right, so now I'm going to flip it over do the back. I'm just trying to get as close as I can so I don't have any of those threads hanging off my earring. OK, 
Okay, one more. Where is this guy? Right there. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply our, our eyelet. I almost called it a grommet. There we go. So if you look at your eyelet, you actually only need a single one for each earring. You have your flat, round part on top, and then if I flip it to the side, you'll see it has a wide base, but then it gets a narrow circle on the inside, and kind of, you'll see that side is a little rougher. So this is the right side of the eyelet. This is the side that should be on the front of whatever you designate to be the front of your earring. So you just kind of figure out where you want to place it on your earring, what kind of a design you want. So I'm actually going to put it right here. So just make sure that you don't put it, you don't want it too close to the edge, and you also don't want it too far in. Because if it's too close to the edge, you might be ripping your fabric and then the eyelet is going to come out. Or if you go too far in, then your jump ring is not going to fit in it. So that's why you want it about, I'm going to say, about an eighth of an inch down from the top of your earring. So I'm just going to mark that with my fabric pin so I know where I want it. And then you can carefully use your scissors to just cut a little hole there. Or I like using these uh, hole punchers that you get in the uh, stationery store or the scrapbooking section of the craft store. It's a little bit smaller. It's about 1 16th. So I'm just going to punch it where I want it. And I could do a couple of them. And then just to make it a little bit bigger, I have this little skewer. Kind of make my hole a little bit bigger. Because I just need it big enough to get my eyelet through. So you're putting the small part of the eyelet through the hole. Kind of see if I can fit it in there. And if it's still, if it's still too small, then I'll just grab my scissors and I'll just do a couple more slits to kind of fit it in there. Just a little bit. I just do a little bit at a time because I don't want to cut too much away from it and then cause a huge hole. Okay, that's just about in there. Sometimes you have to really work with it. And if it looks a little frayed, it's fine. Because you'll see in the next step, there it goes, we're going to hammer it. And it's going to actually make it look a little nicer than it does now. Alright, so now we're going to get our tool. So there's two parts to the eyelet tool. You have the long slender part, and if you look at one end, it has a little groove. And then we have the little short stumpy one, and it has another groove. So I put the short one down on the table, and I'm actually going to use my little wooden button thing to kind of protect the table. Then I'm going to put the right side of my eyelet in the groove. And then the tool goes on top of that. And then I grab my hammer, and I hit it a couple of times. And you'll see it kind of breaks apart and then it folds over. So this is the back of my earring. This is the front. So it looks pretty good. So once we have that done, you're now going to grab some of your embroidery floss. So again, I like using a contrasting thread. And this is for fall. It's a nice auburn color. And what we're going to do is a blanket stitch all around the perimeter of the earring. So we get a nice finished look on the earring. You can also do a whip stitch if you want, but I'm going to show you how to do a blanket stitch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and thread and I'm going to come up behind the front layer. So underneath the front layer, because I want the knot to be in between the two fabric layers so it's hidden. Okay. And again, I have the right side of the earring facing up, so now my knot is in there. I'm going to come up behind and I'm going to go through both layers of the earring, right next to where my first stitch is. And you'll see it creates a loop. And then I just go through the loop. And that's my first stitch. 
So now I'm going to go a little ways away from that. It creates a, another loop. I'm going to go through the loop, pull it down, and you'll see what it does. It creates a series of vertical stitches and there'll be one stitch that goes across the top. So I'm going next to that. Go through the loop. And there's my next stitch. So again, I'm just going to do this all the way around. And you kind of want your stitches to be not too far apart. They're about an eighth of an inch apart. Usually the closer together it is, the neater it's going to look. You can make them bigger to make this part go faster, but it usually does not look as neat, but it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to do this all the way around. And this is going to take me a little bit. So for fun, we created some sewing trivia for you guys. So we can have some fun while we're doing this stitching part. So we have some questions that are multiple choice. So even if you're not sure about the answer, you can always still guess and you can see how well that you do. So you ready for the first question? All right, here we go. What part of your body closely equals one yard? Is it A, the distance between your hip and the floor? B, the distance between your fingertips and your nose? C, the distance between the base of your neck and your hips. What do you think it is? And I learned this trick from when I worked in the fabric store when you weren't close to the table and you just wanted to figure out about how much fabric was hanging around. Oh, we got an answer. Oh, so we got an answer. <laughs> All right, the answer is B. B is the answer, is that is correct. You guys win the prize. Okay. Gonna get ready for question number two. If you guys want, you can uh, unmute your, your mics to answer the questions if you want. Yeah, there you go. Okay, you ready for question number two? Question number two is an easy one. How many feet are in one yard of fabric? I have to think about that. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. There's 36 inches in a yard. Margie is correct. Three feet. One foot. One foot is a third of a yard at 12 inches. There are 36 inches in a yard. I never did so much math than when I was working in a fabric store. All right, question number three as I'm making my way around this earring. What classic Batman character is seen sewing his or her own costume in a Batman movie? This is years ago, but it's an awesome scene. Is it A, the penguin and his little penguin helpers, B, the Joker, or C, Catwoman? I'm actually not sure. <laughs> it's probably the most awesome scene in this whole movie. I'll give you a hint. It is Batman Returns. I was in that movie. You were? Well. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, I got it right. <laughs> Catwoman. After she falls out, she goes and she makes her own vinyl costume. And she did not match her thread because there's white stitches all over the place. But she actually <laughs> uses the sewing machine. All right, question number four. Ready? <laughs> all right, well, that one just flashed on there. There we go. What Every Disney character didn't. what Disney character does not sew in a movie? Is it A Cinderella, B Wendy, C Ariel? She is not seen sewing in the movie. Give up. Give up. C Ariel. 
She does have a lot of gadgets, but she never sews. She does comb her hair with a fork, though. Margie, you can unmute yourself if you want. You're muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, can I can hear you. All right. Next question. Did you get that one, Margie? No, I'm afraid not, Professor. Mm -hmm. I said A, Cinderella. <laughs> I saw the answer, so I didn't play. Uh, she made her uh, first ball gown before her evil stepsisters rip it apart. And the mice and the birds help her make it. Okay. All right. Because of the type of buttons they wore, what became a common nickname of policemen? Is it A, a flat foot because their buttons were flat? B, fuzz because they wore velvet buttons? C, coppers or cops because their buttons were made out of copper. It is coppers. Made the most sense. <laughs> yes. Although they are known by the other two names as well. All right. I'm ready for another question. So I'm halfway done here. Which of these is not a classic quilt design? <sighs> a, the double hive quilt. B, the log cabin quilt. C, the Irish chain quilt. Oh, Two yeah. of them are quite popular. Well, we picked the same thing. We're both probably wrong. <laughs> it is A, hey! the double hive quilt. <laughs> Yay. And I have to say, it was really hard for me to make one up because it seems like I'd come up with one and there would actually be a quilt name for that. And I'd be like, oh, huh. I guess I can't use the monkey wrench because there's a quilt that call is this called that. All right. Next question. This famous story about Hans Christian Andersen has a couple of deceptive tailors. Is it A, the Snow Queen? B, the Emperor's New Clothes, or C, Thumbelina. That's an easy one. Yes. It's easy. I was going to say that. <laughs> I mean, the clothes gives it away. Yes. I love that story. It's Me one of my too. favorite classics. All right. I think we have one more question. Most important one, Professor Pincushion's Apple Cozy project appeared in what published publication? A. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Family Fun Magazine. I don't know who won, but you guys both did great. So I'm almost done here. Well, still have a little ways to go, but we're getting closer. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything. I have a comment. Yes. I think it would be so wonderful to make leaf-shaped earrings because oh, it would be, like, really cool for fall. That would I was be cool. thinking of pumpkins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and the really cool thing about the pumpkins or the leaves is you can use the stitching for making the lines on the pumpkins or on the leaves or doing the leaf veins or whatever they're called. So yeah, that's a really, that's a really good idea for fall. That's a project mm -hmm. for you, Margie. We want to see them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if you don't want to do the blanket stitch and you're like, I just want a circle, you can always just make it a little bit bigger, just stitch around it with wrong sides together, and then flip it right side out. The the tricky part is because of the batting in the middle, so I would just base the batting to one of your circles, and then you can always remove the basting stitches once you flip it right side out, because you're not going to be stitching it all the way around. Of course, you have to be able to turn it around. All right, so we're getting close, and then we're going to get to the fun part, which is decorating. And for decorating, let me just bring this in. I have these little rhinestone pearly things. I actually found these at the scrapbooking section. They're like for decorating your scrapbook pages, but they're flat. They have sticky on one side, so it makes it easy for me to kind of test out where I want to place things and kind of hold it until I'm ready to glue it. Or you can use lace, buttons, sequins, 
anything you want you just going to make sure that since they are going to be glued on you don't want anything too heavy that it's not going to take with the glue but this was a nice little surprise that I found when I was just wandering around the, the fabric store because they had all different kinds of ones they had little ones that look like little birds and letters and different shapes and colors and stuff so it can really you know unlimited ways that you can make your earring unique and stuff and I never try to make my two earrings look exactly the same I just kind of make them both look a little different because I'm not perfect anyway so I don't even try to be perfect alright so I'm getting to the end and see I probably put my eyelet a little bit too close to the top because now when I get to stitching this part it's a little tough so I'm just gonna do the best I can at this point and then I'll just jump over to this side all right so now that we're back to where we started from let me move this out of the way all I'm gonna do turn this over and tie a knot in the back because I don't want my knot to be showing on the right hand side okay and then we'll cut that off all right so before we get to the decorating I'm gonna get my earring findings so I have my jump ring and then my earring hook and you could use the the studs if you want to do the earring stud but it just makes it a little bit harder because you got to find a way to be able to attach it to a jump ring because that's what goes through the eyelet so again this is about 12 millimeter I just open it's probably easier if you have a needle nose plier but it's pretty easy just to do by hand too and before I close it I'm just gonna stick my hook on there and then close it back up and then the fun part so I'm just gonna get these little guys here and place them where I want them so I'll probably put this one here and I have my little pearls and I never really like have a set design I just do you know what feels good what I like and then maybe we'll put one right here kind of in the middle and see because it's sticky I can put it on a side and they stay on so that's kind of nice but that's not going to be secure enough to wear around town so I'm definitely going to use my fabric glue and I'm going to glue them into place a little glue a little glue on there and just whoops I also have glue on my finger all right and that's it and that's how you make your fancy new fabric earrings that are great for gifts if you know anybody who really likes crafts and like things made out of fabric because you can do different designs for different people and make them kind of fun there we go and if you make any earrings I would love to see what versions you guys do it's always fun to see what other people do and then you get you know it inspires you and you get ideas on what you can do next as well So that's it. Do you guys have any other questions or anything before we end this? You'll have to unmute yourself though. You have to unmute yourself. You're muted. <laughs> I think it's fabulous and I know of a lot of different ways to make it. Thank you. So there, now I have a pair 
a fabulous earrings that I can wear for the fall. And like you said, you can do leaves, you can do pumpkins, you can do anything. They're beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you thank guys you. enjoyed this demo of the fabric earrings.